Sight See the Tarot is a series on my channel through which I take you on a tour of tarot books, spreads, techniques and tips, different decks, and more. Today's video tutorial will be a hands-on workshop, so please watch while you're seated comfortably in front of your reading space with a deck of cards ready to go. You're also going to want pen and paper nearby. The last Sight See the Tarot video was a lecture summarizing the key points from Tarot of the Bohemians by Pappas. If you are a woman and you were bored out of your mind, don't worry, Pappas expected as much. As he puts it, the first part of our study of the tarot, full of numbers of Hebrew letters and abstract deductions, is not calculated to attract the attention of the ladies. Today's workshop, however, is intended to be interesting to everybody. Pappas believes his approach to tarot divination will appeal to both the fair inquirers, that's us ladies, he's talking about us, and the skepticism of sterner intellects. By the way, it does seem like Pappas, like many other tarot readers and occultists of his time, insists on reading the cards with reversals, as he's saying the first step to learn the 78 card meanings upright and then learning the 78 card meanings in reverse, which, quote, must be retained in in the memory before anyone can become a good fortune teller by cards. Next, the only tarot divination method you need to know. Fair ladies of lesser intelligence and skeptics of sterner intellect, pay attention. The first lesson on tarot spreads is four anchor points, which you see on screen straight out of his text. Card position one is always about the start of something, or if you're reading about someone's life, the childhood. This corresponds astrologically to the ascendant sign. Card position two is the opposite end of life, old age. It also is the fall or aftermath of what you're reading about. This corresponds astrologically to the Imam Koli. Card position three is the decline, maturation stage. This is the descendant sign in astrology. Card four is the apogee or zenith point, the best it can get. This corresponds astrologically with the medium collate or midheaven point. Now, here's the thing. See the numbers one, two, three, and four? When you set the cards down, you've got to set the cards down in that order, counterclockwise. But when it's time to read the cards, you read the cards in the opposite direction, clockwise. Meaning, when it comes time to read this four card spread, read card one first, then read card four, then read card three, and then finally read card two. These four card position anchor points represent the quaternary, the R-O-T-A, the astrological wheel, the great wheel of life, which incidentally is the first hour or first stage of tarot initiation, which we covered in the previous lecture. The four anchor points signify the four letters of the Tetragrammaton and the four worlds, and here the three signify the trinity within the quaternary. So the simplest approach to a tarot reading would be these seven anchor points. You've got the cross of four points that give you the four stages of man, four stages of whatever it is you're reading about. And don't forget, even though you lay the cards down counterclockwise, later you're going to read them clockwise, card A, card D, card C, and then card B. That's the first level. The second level is the trinity within the four, just like the holy trinity within the four-lettered sacred word YHVH. These seven cards and this sequence is going to be the reading spread we're using today. There is a third layer or level to your tarot reading spread, but it's a little advanced and for today it's optional. These 12 cards are going to signify the 12 astrological houses. These three levels of a tarot reading spread is all you need in your repertoire. After all, the great majority of us watching right now are women of little intelligence. Can't expect us to remember too much. Always start with a simple four card reading spread, level one. This is with the minor arcana suit that corresponds with the subject matter you're reading about. Oh, by the way, Pappas says the suit and majors of your divination reading deck should always be kept separated out. If you want to build on those four cards, grab your majors and draw three cards, level two. Want even more info? Someone paying you a ton of money for a full one hour reading? Expand to level three with the 12 card astrological house reading. And that's an overview of what we're doing today. What we're going to be working with is the fifth lesson on fortune telling by the tarot or the rapid process. Start by separating out the four suits of the minor arcana and the majors. When you're done, you should have five separate card piles, one of just the major arcana, and then one each of the four suits from the minor arcana. Pause here until you've got five card piles, one of the 22 majors, one of the 14 wands, 14 cups in a third pile, 14 swords, and fifth and final card pile, the 14 pentacles or coins. 
Now, identify what exactly you want to do a tarot reading about. Form the specific question in your mind. Pause here if you need more time. Next, you have to categorize the subject matter of your specific question. Pappas says all questions basically fall into one of four categories, career or work related, your profession, love or interpersonal relations. This can also be your relationship with yourself, a conflict or struggle, some form of combat, a lawsuit, legal matter, man versus man, man versus environment, and finally, personal economics, money matters, property, assets and liabilities, your financials. If you categorize your question as career or work related, which can also be a business venture, a creative venture or project, anything that has to do with your sense of personal glory, choose either the suit of wands or the suit of pentacles. Go with the wands if it's more about creativity and ingenuity. Go with the pentacles if it pertains to your financial stability, sense of security, or has to do with capital investment. If your question pertains to love, a romantic relationship, a family relationship, friendship, any personal relation, anything related to home or family and the emotional plane, then choose the suit of cups. When your reading is about something that's conflict-oriented, about some sort of struggle or combat situation, such as a legal matter, when you're filled with anger, vengeance, hatred, resentment, all hostility, anything related to misfortune, then go with the suit of swords. Finally, if your question is about money, real estate, investments, or your finances, then choose the suit of pentacles or suit of coins. The suit of pentacles is associated with assets, capital, and inquiring about your material resources. Take the card pile of the single suit you've selected and shuffle the 14 cards. Here I'm shuffling by distributing the cards into four separate piles, but you can shuffle any way you like. There are no rules here. Now draw four of the cards at random to form the diamond, starting at your left corner, then your bottom center, your right, and then your top center. Here's what your formation of four cards should look like. Set down in the sequence of card A, card B, card C, and card D. Just don't forget that later you're going to read this in the opposite sequence, card A, card D, card C, and card B. And just a reminder, these four cards should only be from the minor arcana suit that you chose based on the subject matter of your question. Now pick up the card pile of major arcana cards only, shuffle the 22 majors, cut the cards once, then fan out the 22 majors and pick out at random 7 cards. If you're reading for someone else, have that person pick the 7 cards. Here I'm just dealing out the first 7 in the pile, so work with what feels best for you and just extract the 7 majors. Shuffle the 7 majors and while you do so, keep your specific question and the subject matter in mind. When you're ready, pick the first three cards from the pile of seven majors in your hands and place them into the three anchor points, the triangle within the four card diamond. And just so we're clear, the three cards in a triangle are placed top left, top right, then bottom center, the trinity within the four. Let's start by assessing the outer diamond of four cards. If you're a tarot beginner, work with a book of card meanings here and look up the cards one by one. This is also when you may want to get out your journal because we're going to be taking notes on the reading. Recall that card A indicates commencement. I read this as what you have in hand, your karmic accounting, your current resources, or how the situation is going to start off. Now, pause the video here to journal and write out in a stream of consciousness style your interpretations and reading of this card. What is this card telling you? Then resume the video when ready. Card D gets straight to the point. This is the best things are going to get based on your current path and what you've currently got going on. This is the predicted outcome and climax based on what we see in card A. If you don't like what you see in card D, there are ways you can change the outcome. You will want to recalibrate and reevaluate what you're doing at the moment so you can divert the path and set your course on the right track. Please pause the video here to journal about this second card and resume when ready. 
Part C is maturity, or the perfected condition of the situation you are reading about. This is the full story, the completed development. It's what you realize, the lessons learned or lessons to be learned by this situation at hand and its predicted outcome. Card C gives you the development and the fuller story of why card A leads to card D. It also reveals the most likely outcome based on what we know from card A. Pause the video to journal on your reading of card C and resume when ready. Finally, card B is the fall, the unwinding, and I read this as messages about the aftermath, the transitioning period from this whole event into what's coming up next. Pause the video to journal on your reading of card B and resume when ready. Now let's assess the three major Arcanum cards you've drawn. Card one of the majors is the past influence. This is the root cause of why you're on the track that you're on. Major Arcanum card one is connected to the minor Arcanum card A. Card two of the majors is the present. This is the current forces at play around you, influencing the situation at hand. Major Arcanum card two is connected to the minor Arcana cards D and C. Card three of the majors is the future. This is predictive. This is what's to come next for you. Read card three in conjunction with minor arcana, card B. Now read these three cards with the mindset that the three fates are sending you three key prophecies. You can also layer the interpretation and read these three cards as the body's physical limits and capacity, your mindset and where your state of mind is at, and the greater spiritual purpose of why you're going to go through what you'll be going through. Now pause the video here to assess these three major arcana cards in your reading. Now, if that wasn't too hard for you, we can add on to that reading for a more elaborate process. Ooh, the plot thickens. This next part is going to integrate a little basic astrology. The four and the three total seven cards, Pappas tells us, doesn't account for the path of the sun or astrology. And recall our lecture in the previous episode, tarot and astrology are twin flames and should always be inseparable. He said it, not me. Don't jump down my throat. First, the significator card. We're going to assume you know what a significator is. If not, some references are linked in the description box. Place the significator card where you see that big red encircled X. Plot twist, <laughs> if your typical go-to significator card is already out on the table in one of the card positions, so for example, you typically go with the Queen of Swords, but the Queen is already in like card position too, then fetch your pile of majors and draw a major arcana card at random. This signifies the power or energy you will need to summon up going forward for the most favorable outcome. This suddenly becomes your most important card in the reading. Also, it's going to be the stand-in for your significator card. Gather up all remaining minor arcana cards. Leave the majors alone, just the minors, all unused minors, and then shuffle the minor arcana. Get them totally randomized, and as you shuffle, focus on your question once again, asking for further explication or clarification. Ask the universe to give you more cards and send more messages to help you interpret the seven cards you already have out. You want the details! Deal out 12 cards counterclockwise to form a circle around your current arrangement. These 12 cards signify the 12 astrological houses. Here, I like to actually go broad, go beyond the specific question I asked for the reading, and do a general life path reading with these 12 cards as they correspond with the 12 houses. This is going to give me a really good map of my life and my fortunes at the moment, plus every Everything is interconnected, so things related to one area of my life are going to have an impact on the question I asked about. So this just broadens my scope. If you want to try this out, deal out the 12 cards into the circle and then pause here to read these 12 cards. Some house references will appear on the screen for you. This is also going to come in a supplemental handout that you can download from the episode page. Journal and document your impressions. If this seems like overkill to you, no worries, carry on. The video ends here. That was Tarot Divination with Pappas, where you and I worked through a 130-year-old tarot spread. So, how was it? Were you fair ladies able to keep up? 